Welcome to Power Pivot video number two. Hey, if you want to download these workbooks and follow along, Power Pivot 201, lots of non-normalized data. And I'm going to use Control Tab to go over to the other Excel workbook, Power Pivot 2 columnar database, non-normalized, and Control Tab. Power Pivot 203, lots of normalized data. Now in this video, we would like to talk about importing a data set from an Excel workbook into Power Pivot. Now the point of this video is to see that a huge data set, even if it's not normalized data sets, when you import it into Power Pivot, the file size can be dramatically reduced. Now let's check this table out. Control down arrow. This is 500,000 rows of data in Excel. Now this is not truly big data, right? For Excel, it's kind of big. But we want to illustrate the point that when we import something like this, we'll go look at the file size of this. And then when we import it into our columnar database, it'll be unbelievable how much smaller the file size is. Now, non-normal data means in the sales rep column, we have lots of repeats. right? We could have a key here and then a whole lookup table with sales rep name, whole lookup table with product, with price, with region. In fact, let's go look. I'm going to Control Tab, Control Tab. Here's the third workbook, lots of normalized data. Here's the same transaction data set, but instead of sales rep, region, and product, we have keys. Those are numbers that refer to other smaller tables. Here's all the products and price. So in Excel, we do a VLOOKUP to bring the price and product information over here. Uh, here's the sales rep table. Here's the region table. In databasing or Power Pivot, we could relate these with a relationship. So that's lots of normalized data. And we'll come and look at this data set later. What we want to do is take this data set and import it into Power Pivot. Remember, 500,000 rows, not normalized. I'm going to close this because I want to have it close. I'm not going to save. Now I'm going to import it. And we can go to Power Pivot Manage Data Model. Or we can use the keyboard Alt-BM. And in the Get External Data button, we can use from other sources. And look, we have a huge list of all sorts of things, including Access and other databases. Scroll all the way down, Excel, text files. We'll look at some of these other options later. We want Excel file, click Next. And here we go. I'm going to say Use First Row as Column Headers. Excel File Path, there's my Browse button. And I'm going to browse and say Lots of Non-Normalized Data. Double click. Now we're going to come down here to Next. By the way, this these series of dialog boxes look similar for like access and other data imports. And we'll look at some of those later. Now the key is once we get here, I, I don't want to click Finish. I want to click Preview and Filter. And we'll see more about this button later. We're just checking it out right now. I always click this button just to make sure there's not some trouble. And it looks OK. We don't need to look at all the data. I just want to make sure there are you know, no extra columns looking OK. I'm going to click OK. Later, we'll see how to filter out certain items we don't want. I'm going to click Finish now, and that's it. We've imported. This is the first time in this video series we've imported from an external source into Power Pivot. 340. Wow, 400, almost 500,000. Click Close. And there's our data set. We're not going to worry about sorting or doing any of that data modeling. I'm simply going to close. This is the window for Manage Data Model. Close it and go back to Excel. Enable Control S. And I want to go look at this actual columnar database non-normalized file size. And check this out. Lots of non-normalized data. That's what we started with, 20 megabytes. Look at this when we imported it into Power Pivot. It went from 20 to about 1.7 megabytes using that columnar database that we talked about last time. And look at this. This is the lots of normalized in the columnar database. I imported this before the video just to see file size. Normalized, we started with 16,000 and we went down to 1.8 megabytes. 
So the point of this video is that columnar database, it is amazing. It compresses that data. It not only keeps it in a columnar database, but it compresses it, makes smaller file size, and that database helps with formula speed also. All right, we'll see you next video.